I was at Stanford. I was a Stanford professor um, from 64 till 98. The, uh, I was department chair in the in 1960s, uh, which was very useful because of the meditation practice. I found it useful in um, dealing with both faculty and with students, right? and and in consulting, to um, be able to nourish people and sort of. Um, sample their mindsets um, and therefore be able to have meaningful dialogues with them. Of course, there's always backlash uh -huh. when you're trying to walk a different path or you're trying to create a different path or you're trying to talk about something that doesn't fit into their internal self-consistency picture. Mm -hmm. And how do you defend or... Uh, if I would love to have uh, a real discussion. There's never a serious discussion because their minds cannot accept the information. It boggles their mind. When they look at our experiments, their eyes start spinning and they sort of lose consciousness. If they really pay attention to the data, they can't handle it because they're in violation of internal self-consistency, which they've held truth. It's very difficult for them. You see, there's nothing wrong with what science has done. But they're limited and they're now stuck in distance time. They cannot allow themselves to deal with categories of phenomena that are not distance time related and they don't even realize that. Orthodox science doesn't really seek truth about nature. It seeks internal self-consistency with respect to a reference frame that they hold about nature. And that reference frame has come from what? That reference frame has come from the study of space and time. Right. And the unstated assumption since the days of Descartes by orthodox science has been that no human qualities of consciousness, intention, emotion, mind, or spirit can significantly influence a well-designed target experiment in physical reality. Mm. Now the issue is this other aspect of reality does not, the phenomena are not distance and time phenomena. Right. Therefore the paradigm cannot deal with them in any way. Quantum mechanics, relativity theory can't touch anything to do with consciousness because it's not a time-space subject phenomena, right. or phenomena. And once you see that, you realize that nature is so much more and you have to be willing to expand your paradigm, your reference frame for viewing nature. Mathematical models of orthodox science have to be distance time related, somehow connected with that. Mm. Mine is not. So your math is separate that from... Um, it's, it's, it's another reference frame which is coupled together so you jump to higher dimensions by that coupling. Right. If you don't pump it up, then it uncouples. Wow. We have found over the last decade, maybe a little more, that there are two, two general states of physical reality. There's our normal one, the electric atom molecule one, and that's the distance time related phenomena. Our three dimensional. Yes. The other one appears to function in the physical vacuum, and the physical vacuum is, occupies the space within the fundamental particles that make up the electric atoms and molecules. Ah. So it's, it's also in outer space, of course, but the really key place is that it functions there, ah. and, and it goes faster than the velocity of light. Uh, which you can show mathematically. Um, we can't, normal e equipment in our normal world cannot access right. that. But with the use of consciousness, which we've shown experimentally, um, you can begin to access this other level of reality. And you can bring about what we call a coupled state. And the coupled state is a higher it's called electromagnetic gauge symmetry state of the very space. It conditions the space. And the spa phenomena occur there differently.